flip mini lecture number 37. This is on night chapter 15. This is actually a pretty uh, lengthy chapter. So even this first mini lecture is going to get split up into multiple parts. There's really two subjects early on in this chapter. One is the problem of circular motion. And the other pro is the problem of simple harmonic motion. And they're not the same thing. Maybe at some deep level they are, but if they are, I don't know it. They're not the same thing. It's just they both involve sines and cosines. So they're kind of grouped together in one chapter. So let's fo focus on this, which is circular motion. Suppose this circle here has radius r. Suppose this angle is measured theta from the plus x axis. Then we can see something pretty straightforward here, which is that if this particle is going around this thing, then we have x as a function of time is equal to r times the cosine of theta. Now that's a func some function of time. Theta is going to be changing. R is not going to be changing. Meanwhile, y of t is r sine of theta. Now a really important special case is if theta is proportional to t. That's uniform circular motion. Now, you might go, oh, theta is proportional to t plus maybe there's some initial value of theta, which we could call theta naught or phi naught. So theta could be proportional to t, and then there should be, could be some offset term, which when you put t equal to zero here, you get phi naught. But just let's just leave that off for a second, okay? Theta is just going to be proportional to t. Let's figure out what the proportionality constant is that goes here. Well, if this is uniform motion and it takes capital T of time to go all the way around, so capital T of time, that's a period to go all the way around. Meanwhile, in that time period, theta should increase by two pi. So if T goes to T plus, capital T, then theta should go to theta plus 2 pi. Now, if you want me to make this a little more precise, I could say if I have a T new, which is the T old plus a capital T, then I should get a theta new, which is a theta old plus 2 pi. Now, I'll tell you the con proportionality constant that makes this work is if you put theta is equal to 2 pi over capital T times T. And it works. Go check it. I did it in class, but there's no real reason for me to do that algebra for you. Okay. So there's our formula. Now we can write that formula a few other ways. Um, as an example, if T is 3 seconds, so that means it takes 3 seconds to go all the way around, then the frequency we call 1 over t, which in this case of that little example right there, we 1 over 3 seconds, which is one third of a hertz. Okay, so another way of writing this would be to say, oh, 1 over t is f. So I could write that as theta equals 2 pi f t. Now, another way to write it would be to say, oh, 2 pi f, that's a combo that comes up a lot. We call that omega. Is that the same omega that we've always been calling omega? Yes, because when you go around one revolution, this 2 pi here takes care of the fact that 2 pi radians have been swept out. So this, if I say omega is 2 pi f, that is what we've been calling the angular velocity. d theta dt 
which is also equal to, also called, is sometimes by me and by other people called the angular frequency. So now that we've got that relationship, we also have that theta equals omega t. So let's summarize. Let me just focus on the x component for a moment here. Plugging in what we just learned, x of t is equal to r cosine omega t. Now I just want to say something here about parentheses. In the math department, you will get marked wrong if you write it like that. They have started demanding that there be parentheses around the omega t. That is, uh, in the physics world, still non-standard. And I hope it remains on non-standard, honestly, because those parentheses don't really need to be there any more than the parentheses in y equals mx plus b need to be there. That is to say, they don't need to be there. There's a certain order of operations that everybody has agreed on, and that in this case, it's you do multiplication before you do addition. The order of operations that has been agreed on by everybody here is you do this multiplication before you take the cosine. So adding extra parens here is unnecessary. But students have so much trouble with that nowadays that they start and put the parentheses in, whatever. You will not see Knight or me adding those. Okay. So there's your formula. Now I promise to bring back something else. Uh, I said in a few minutes, I'll bring it back. What if at t equals zero, particle had already had a head start. So here, let me draw at t equals zero, let's say, we already were at theta naught. And then a little bit later, here at some other time t, now we've got an additional omega t. Then if at t equals th zero, we're already at theta naught, but then we're still increasing with angular velocity omega, then the formula for theta is theta equals omega t plus theta naught. And for some reason, and I'm not too sure about, Knight often calls that phi naught. And he calls that the phase angle. So uh, let me summarize the terminology too. The terminology we've introduced so far, we have T, the period. We have F equals one over T, which is the frequency. We have omega equals two pi f, which is the angular frequency or the angular velocity. Finally, we have the thing that multiplies x. You know, when we had a, when we, when we have the thing that multiplies the cosine, we had x of t is equal to, in this case, r cos omega t plus phi naught. That thing that multiplies it has a name too. This is the maximum value that x is ever going to be, and minus that is the minimum value x is ever going to be. Why? Because cosine goes between plus 1 and minus 1. So this is going to max out at plus r and hit its minimum at minus r. So that thing that's out in front, which here was r, is called the amplitude. And uh, later on, you'll see that that is often the letter capital A for amplitude. So there's a bunch of terminology for you that uh, you'll run into all over the place in the beginning of chapter 15. And I think that's enough for one flip lecture. See you at 37B.